This morning we need to do a little bit of church. There is a problem that is being taught in American Christianity today, and it needs to be fixed. It is hurting you, perhaps, and me. And it is a problem of definitions. Here's the teaching. The teaching is, if you believe in Jesus, then you will be blessed. Depending on your definition of what it means to be blessed, that statement is either true or false. The problem is that we're being taught that being blessed means that if you follow Jesus, you will be happy, there will be less stress, there will be less difficulty, there will be less financial burdens and problems and less suffering and life will generally be better. And that is what I'm hearing a lot of. So if following Jesus means blessing and that's the definition of blessing, then that is false. And as a result of people believing this, when they go through a hard time, people are thinking, God must have abandoned me. God doesn't love me, or I'm not his child. Or God doesn't care, or God is far off. And you walk through life trusting in Christ, yet you feel abandoned by God, like he is either uncaring or unloving, or maybe God's against me, maybe this way is not the truth because life has become so difficult since I've become a Christian. So if that's your definition of blessing, then that math is wrong. If I follow Jesus, I will be blessed if your definition of blessing is sin forgiven, hell canceled, and heaven gained, and a relationship with God and God's oversight over your life as you follow him, then I would say that statement is true. So let's think about this for a second. I was reading in devotions this morning in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 32 through 33, and that's what inspired all this, by the way. Paul says, at Damascus, the governor was against him. At Damascus, he was let down through a window in the wall and escaped the governor's hands. Paul had to escape and run for his life. It almost seems like become a child of God and get abused by others and, and life and have health issues and go hungry and be stressed and be broken. Paul had all of those things. In fact, in 2 Corinthians 11 earlier, Paul talks about all the struggles that he had to go through as a loved child of God. So I started thinking, who else in the Bible followed the Lord and suffered emotionally, psychologically, physically? Who also suffered? There's probably more than this, but this is off the top of my head. You have Job, a righteous man who suffered incredibly. Paul, the apostles suffered. Jesus suffered. Perfect man. Was he loved by God? He was a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Isaiah suffered. Elijah suffered. Daniel suffered for following the Lord. David, yes, he sinned, but he also, when he ran from King Saul, David's life was rough. He had to run from cave to cave in the desert, running for his life, crying out in emotional distress. He was called the man after God's own heart, called that by God. Abraham suffered. Isaac suffered. Joseph suffered. Mary and Joseph suffered. They had to travel back and forth from Egypt. 
they had to run from the lives. And picture the ridicule Mary had to deal with being pregnant and not being married. The rejection she faced. Moses suffered. Samuel suffered. The people in Hebrews suffered incredibly. People who God loved. People who God cared about and God directed their lives. They suffered incredibly and died painfully. Noah suffered. Imagine being in that boat and knowing humanity is being destroyed. What did he do right after he got off the ark? Go read it. He filled the suffering with alcohol. He got drunk. John the Baptist, a voice of one crying in the wilderness, he suffered. I just want to say to you, if you want to live a godly life, you're going to suffer. And here's what you need to know. When you suffer, when you struggle emotionally, when you struggle with depression, anxiety, despair even, when you struggle with loss, when you struggle with a loved one dying or being rejected for Christ's name, just know that does not mean that God does not love you. That does not mean that you are not called according to his purposes. That does not mean that God is not working out a plan in your life. In fact, you may be exactly where God wants you. And in that, you can have peace and rest, knowing that being a Christian does not mean not struggling. It's a normal part of the Christian experience. So the next time you suffer, unless you're sinning and it's causing the suffering, you need to repent. Maybe that is a part of God's coaching and God's discipleship program for your life to strengthen you. Now here's what I'd like you to do. Look at a couple of times of immense suffering in your life. How have you grown through that? How have you deepened in your walk with Christ through that? Being loved by God does not mean having an easy, prosperous, wonderful, finances paid, nice yacht life. Because the godly people I know had a difficult life and had a deep love for the Lord. They were blessed, and that is real blessing. Be encouraged with these words, and got to fix that view so that the next time you suffer, you're not thinking God's abandoning, but rather, God's got me under his wing of care, and he knows I'm suffering, and he is going to complete that good work in me, his child. And lift up your chin and wait on the Lord. Have a great day.